all you beautiful people out there. I am Mrs. Realistic. Welcome back to the channel. We've got something a little different today. We have a non-music video request, and this is Michael McIntyre, a British comedian, and my name is Akel Akinkacker, and apparently this is about a visit to the dentist, so this should be fun. If you like what I do, please don't forget to like and subscribe, drop a comment down below, click the bell for notifications so that you will always know when another video comes out, and without further ado, let's get our laugh on. I've also had five teeth out this year. Okay, that's bad, I know. Four wisdom teeth, all of them, and another tooth I've had to have out because I've had terrible trouble with my teeth. It all started last year, I had this pain in my tooth because, you know, last year I was fine, my knee was fine, my calf was fine, my shoulder was fine, I was in pretty good nick. Then I had this pain in my tooth and I went to the dentist, you know. I said that to my husband the other day, I said, oh, that's still in good nick. And he goes, what the hell are you talking about? I guess coming from an English family, uh, it means it's in pretty good condition, but we say it's in pretty good nick. And uh, he thought I was insane. <laughs> but this all goes back to the um, generalization that people from England have awful teeth, which I don't know if that's necessarily true or not, but England has a bad rap for poor dental care. As you do, open my mouth, which is key. Obviously, you have to, you have to be asked. <laughs> you don't just walk in, ha? Huh? <laughs> So I sat in the chair and he's like, he looked at my mouth. He's like, you know what? You've got a rotting wisdom tooth. I've got to take it out. I've got to take it out. It's rotting. And I didn't really mind. I didn't even know I had wisdom teeth, to be honest. I know that my wife's had them out. So I'm like, yeah, fine, whatever you like. Also, there's a TV there. I was watching this morning. It's right in my face. I was watching Philip Schofield chatting away. I was like, yeah, go for your life. So he just got to work and I just lay there. And I, I lay there for a while. I don't know, maybe an hour, maybe more than an hour. And I thought, I've been here ages. So I flicked my eyes over, you know, to see if the dentist was okay. And he wasn't. Oh my God, it's quite stressed sort of sweat coming off his forehead. He was straining like this. So I tried to ask him if it was okay, which is hard when your mouth is completely numb and he had, like, equipment in it. Came out as one sort of sound. Just one noise. Like a Northern Irishman saying mirror. That's an odd moment. They're not even in the dentist. I don't know what's going on there. I was like, and he pulled back. And he went, no, 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 I'm not okay. I'm not okay at all. I thought it was something personal. I was like, oh my God, tell me what the matter is. You told me. He said, I've been a dentist for 30 years. Congratulations, that's excellent. That excellent career. Really well done. And I've never not been able to get somebody's tooth out. I can't get your tooth out. It's stuck. So, okay, look, you need to calm yourself down. No loss, okay? I'm not in any pain whatsoever. I've got no way to be. I'm watching this morning. I'm absolutely completely fine. Go away, have a cup of tea, chill out, come back, try again. I believe in you. <laughs> he said, the reason you don't feel any pain is I've numbed your mouth, okay? Look, and he passed me a mirror. I am not going to lie to you. Till the day I die, I will never forget the image that greeted me in the reflection, okay? This side of my face was literally twice the size of this side. There was bruising, I hadn't even noticed. My bib was covered in blood already, I couldn't even see it. There was blood dripping out the side of my face like a sort of vampire. My eye was sort of closing. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Hello? Excuse me, hello? <laughs> I have to say, I felt particularly sorry. The poor people in the waiting room, you know, they're sitting there with the, with the fish tank. Oh, they're not coming back. magazines, reassuring their children <laughs> everything was going to be fine at the dentist visit. I come out with bruising, blood all over my bib, blood coming out the side of my mouth. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Has anybody seen the dentist? They were like, okay, children, you were right. Come with mummy. Come on, come with mummy now. Come on. That's what I do, yeah. I turned around to that idiot on reception. There's some woman there. She's like, would you like to book an appointment with the hygienist? <laughs> the hygienist? I need a fucking plastic surgeon. Where's my dentist going? I look out the door. This idiot is in his car. He's in his car with the door open. He's still got his gloves on. He's going, get in. Get in. Are you serious? Just get in. 
to get in the car with this man. He starts hurtling through the streets. Literally ten minutes earlier, I was in the dentist chair, in relative comfort, watching This Morning. Now we're driving through traffic, he's hooting and swearing. My wife actually called me up on the phone. Like, hello? Hello? Hello, darling, you still at the dentist? I'm with the dentist. <laughs> you mean you're at the dentist? I'm not at dentist. I'm with dentist. You mean you're at the dentist? No, I'm not at the dentist. I'm with the dentist. Why are you being so pedantic? I'm not being... Pum, bum, bum. <laughs> I'm in the car. Oh, you're on your way home? I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> well, what is wrong with you? The dentist is riding. <laughs> the dentist is riding? No, oh, he's riding. He's writing. The dentist did writing. <laughs> the dentist is rising. The dentist did writing. The dentist is writhing. I'll call you a waiter. You're calling a waiter? You're having lunch with the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we show up at this door. He's like, you see that door? I'm like, yeah. Go in there, OK? That's a hospital. They're going to treat you. You're going to be fine. They know to expect you. Just tell them your name. Everything's going to be fine. Get out. Come on. Get out. So I get out to this guy. He just drives off. He leaves me. I'm now standing on the pavement. Smell right? lawsuit. I've still got the bib on, the blood-soaked bib. I'm standing there. I saw my reflection in the glass. I have to. I looked horrific. I was worried I was going to startle the receptionist, so I came in at my best angle. I got him. I got him. Hello, sir, can I help you? Yes, I was wondering. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Have you been attacked? So, no, I haven't been attacked. I don't go out in the bib expecting assault. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been attacked so many times, I now wear absorbent clothing. <laughs> Apparently, you're expecting me. Um, OK, sir, can I take your name, please? Now, the problem is, and you'll know this if you're a local anaesthetic, you can't move your lips. I had no control of my lips, and you need that to do certain letters of the alphabet. The M, for example, greatly requires lip work. M, and I couldn't do it. I need that to identify myself. So she's like, can I take your name, please? Yes. I have Akko Mackinkaka. Akko Akinkaka. Akko Akinkaka. Ackle hugging gaga? Oh, oh what's my lip? Just give me a pen. Right, OK, I think the best thing for you to do is if you head down the corridor, take a seat in the waiting room, and we'll try to get to the bottom of this, OK? Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I was quite pissed off she didn't recognise me, OK? I was on quite a lot of television. I know that this side of my face was pretty much, you know, unrecognisable, but this side was fine. I tried to jog her memory as I went down the corridor. Unbelievable! <laughs> she said I could look round. So we're getting into the waiting room now, and the anaesthetic starts to wear off. I feel a bit, you know... It hurts a bit now. I'll start making this sort of low, sort of E.T. type sound on my own in the corner. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. I tried to look at other people in there. <laughs> Thankfully, I think for everybody, the nurse came in quite quickly. Akul <laughs> Akinkaka? I didn't respond, I just sat there. <laughs> she came right up to my face. Excuse me. Are you Akko Akinkaka? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, what is your name? Akko <laughs> Akinkaka. <laughs> that is actually me. Sorry, Tap. <laughs> this is my real name, obviously, is Akko Akinkaka. <laughs> but here they know me as Akko Akinkaka. <laughs> so they take me up into this room, sort of private room, and she's really nice to me now. She's like, oh my god, you've had a terrible day, haven't you, sir? Like, I have. I had a real horrible day. Please, are you going to help me? She's like, yes, don't worry, don't panic at all. We do this all the time. We're going to give you a general anaesthetic. We're going to take your tooth out. Everything's going to be fine. If you just want to take all your clothes off and pop this hospital gown on, we'll take you straight through to surgery. Throw all my clothes off. 
is we take all your clothes off, pop the gown, and we'll take you through. Why do I have to take all my clothes off? All the patients have to wear the hospital gown. That's, that's, that's hospital policy. If you don't think that I'm the fan that fits away from I've got a problem with my tooth, <laughs> which is located in my lap. <laughs> I don't have a tooth embedded in my arm. They come out wear my home clothes, but no. You'll know what it's like if you've been to hospital. They humiliate you for no reason at all. You have to put this sort of piece of shit, floral, thin gown on the wrong way round with your ass hanging out. <laughs> I had to go in the loo with this gown, with my, literally my bare bottom hanging out of the back, and you put this on for no reason. It's why everyone in the hospital has their clothes on the right way round. You have to put it on like that. I've come out. <laughs> Satisfied? Yes, that's perfect. Fuck off, it's perfect. <laughs> I've got a tooth hanging out, and now I go nugs on out. There's no reason why I have to have nugs on out. It's disgraceful, it's despicable, it's deplorable, it's abhorrent. What on earth are you going to do for me? I'm just so anesthetic that I require access to my ass. I'm pretty. <laughs> There will be repercussions. <laughs> There'll be what? <laughs> repercussions! Don't take that tone with me, Mr. Akin Kaka. For the last time, <laughs> my name is Akin Kaka! <laughs> now I have to follow this woman down the corridor, literally down the corridor. There's no way I'm going to walk down a hospital corridor with my arse just flapping away here. So people just happen to be behind me looking at my arse. No, that is not going to happen. So I go down the, I go down the wall like this. Unbelievable. <laughs> then there's no reason why I have to have a mud bummer. Why have I got a Somebody's actually doing the same thing towards me. All right, quickly, Evie! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, they lie me down on a hospital bed, and I'm thrilled now because I'm my arse is concealed. I'm happy. The anaesthetist comes in, a very serious, sort of quite old man. Hello. I'm the anaesthetist. I'm going to give you a general anaesthetic. I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to give you a small prick on your left arm. You're going to be knocked out. Immediately. You okay with that, Michael? My... <gasps> he knew it. Michael! <laughs> <laughs> That's my name! He said, yes, I know exactly who you are. My three daughters are big fans of yours. <gasps> oh, that's fair kind. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> then he put the needle in my arm and he went, my wife and I not so keen, and put me out! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I was like, you mother... <laughs> I don't know how many hours later, two or three hours later, I didn't know where I was. Sometimes I wake up at home in a deep sleep and I don't know where I am. This was the deepest sleep I've ever had. It was a general anaesthetic. I woke up, it was in bed, it was bright, it was hot. I'd come out of the covers, you know when, you know when like in a heat wave you come out, you know? When your arse is at the highest point, you come out of the duvet. You know when you're lying down, uh, at some stage during the night, the duvet sort of tucks in and you just sort of roll out. Like <laughs> so I wake up. Within moments, I feel this breeze coming in the back. <laughs> so I turn around to see my entire family standing there. <laughs> At which point my son said, pants down, you're the loser. <laughs> oh man, that was great. I've seen him before, but I haven't seen this stand up. I love comedy. In fact, I was just talking to my best friend about this today and how obsessed we are with comedy and watching stand up. And one of my favorites is Sebastian Maniscalco. I think I've seen all of his stand ups and uh, numerous times at that. That is something that we cannot lose is the ability for comedians to do their job to tell jokes, to make people laugh without the fear of being canceled or shut down. And there's quite a few good ones out there that thankfully have not been canceled. So hopefully we never lose our sense of humor. Thank you for this request. That was a great way to start off the day. I hope all of you out there are having a wonderful day. Hopefully this helped a little bit if you aren't having a good day. And as I always say, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.